Lesson 7.3, divide by 5. Dividing by 5 means that we are making 5 equal groups, or we are making groups that each contain 5. We can divide by 5 using different strategies. We can count up by 5s. We can count back on a number line. We can use 10 facts, then take half the quotient. We can divide by 10, then double the quotient, and we can use a multiplication table. So let's talk about each one of these. We can solve 30 divided by 5 by counting up by 5s. We skip count 5 more each time until we get to 30. We skip count 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Then we count how many times we counted up. One, two, three, four, five, six. We counted up six times. 30 divided by five is equal to six. We can solve 45 divided by five by counting back on a number line. So remember, when we're multiplying, we count up. When we're dividing on a number line, we count back. And first we look at the scale on the number line, so we do our jumps correctly. The scale is going by increments of 5, which is perfect to divide by 5. We start at 45, the dividend, and count back by 5s until we reach 0. We're going to make jumps back until we reach 0. Then we're going to count the number of jumps. We start at 45, right here and count back by fives until we reach zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We jumped back by five nine times. That means 45 divided by five is equal to nine. Here we have a number line and the scale is going in increments of five. And our problem is 50 divided by 5. So we start at the 50 on our number line, and we skip back by 5s until we get to 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We made 10 jumps. 50 divided by 5 is equal to 10. Now. Watch what happens on the number line if we do 50 divided by 10. It's in increments of 5, so in order to jump 10, we need to jump 2 of these lines, don't we? We start at the 50, and we make jumps of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 50 divided by 10 is equal to 5. If the divisor is 10, we jump back by 10s until we get to 0. If the divisor is 5, we jump back by 5s until we get to 0. We have learned how to use doubles to multiply when at least one factor is even. Here we have 3 times 8, and 8 is an even number. We can break it into doubles of 4 plus 4, and we can multiply 3 times 4 plus 3 times 4. We learned how to do that in video 4.3. If you missed it, there's a link in this description. So we can use doubles to multiply or divide with 5 by using facts for 10. We use facts for 10, then take half the product to multiply with 5. So this is to multiply with 5. We have 5 times 4, and we need to know the product. First, we multiply the factor 4 by a 10. We do 10 times 4, because that's easy. That's equal to 40. Now we have 40. We take half the product. And to do half, we can divide it by 2, right? Because when we divide something by 2, we split it into two equal shares. We split it in half. So 40 divided by 2 is equal to 20. So 5 times 4 is equal to 20. Because 
5 is half of 10, we can use half of the product to find 5 times 4. See? Because 5 is half of 10, its product will be half of the factor and 10. See? 5 is half of 10, 20 is half of 40. We can divide by 10, then double the quotient to divide by 5. We can do this when the divisor is 5 and the dividend is an even number. We have 40 divided by 5. We need to find the quotient. First, we divide by 10. 40 divided by 10 is equal to 4. Then we double the quotient. We double the 4. We can do 4 plus 4 is equal to 8, or we could do 4 times 2. Either way, adding or multiplying by 2, we're going to double it, and it's going to equal 8. So that means 40 divided by 5 is equal to 8. We had 4 groups of 10, and we split them into 4 equal groups. See that? So that could be like 4 times 10. Here we have 40 in 8 groups of 5. This 4 is half of that 8, but this 5 is half of that 10. Do you see that? Our dividend is the same, but 5 is half of this 10. But its quotient is going to be double that of 10 because we split it into more small groups. See, instead of a few big groups, we can use a multiplication table to divide by 5. Here we have 35 divided by 5, and we need to find the quotient. So we find the column for 5. It's right here. And we follow it down until we see 35. Then we go across to the left to find the unknown factor. It's a 7. We could also find the row for 5 and follow it across to 35 and then go up to see that it's a 7. 35 divided by 5 is equal to 7. If you look on my Joanne School Facebook page in the image section, you'll see some blank multiplication tables that you can fill out to practice, and you'll see one that has all the answers filled in it. And you can copy paste it and print it for your work if you need a multiplication table. So I know some parts of this lesson may have been confusing to some of you, so let's look at this. We can see a pattern when we compare multiplication by 10 and 5. Here we have 10 times 1, which is equal to 10, and 5 times 1, which is equal to 5. 5 is half of 10, and our product will be half of the product for the 10. See, when they both have the same factor, 1. Here we have 10 times 2 is 20, and 5 times 2 is 10. 5 is half of 10. Its product is half of what would be the product for 10 with the same factor of 2. And same thing with 10 times 3 equals 30, and 5 times 3 equals 15. And we can see a pattern when we compare division by 10 and 5. We've got 30 divided by 10 equals 3, and 30 divided by 5 equals 6. Well, this 5 is half of 10, and the quotients for 5 are double the quotients for 10. When we were comparing the multiplication, 5 was half of 10, and its product was half of the product for 10. See? Now 5 is half of 10, but its quotient is double that. 20 divided by 10 is 2. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 5 is half, but its quotient is double. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. It's half of 10, but its quotient is double. See that? So the products for 5 are half the products of 10, and the quotients for 5 are double the quotients for 10. Lisa works 40 hours a week. 
She works an equal number of hours on Monday through Friday. She works an extra 10 hours on Saturday. So how many hours per day does she work on each weekday? First, let's circle the important information. We know she works 40 hours a week and she works an equal number of hours on Monday through Friday. And it's also important that she works 10 hours on Saturday. We need to find the total weekday hours first by subtracting the hours she works on Saturday because the Saturday is a weekend, isn't it? It's not a weekday. She works 40 hours a week. We take away the 10 hours she works on Saturday. That's equal to 30 hours worked on the weekdays. And there's five weekdays. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's five of them. So we need to divide her weekday work hours by five. We have 30 left for the weekdays. We divide it by the five weekdays and it's equal to six hours each weekday. And to solve this problem, we had to do subtraction. We had to know how many weekdays there were in a week. Then we needed to divide. So remember the product of a multiplication equation is the dividend in a related division equation. And the quotient of a division equation is an unknown factor in a related multiplication equation. So there's several strategies we can use to divide by five. We can count up, you know, skip count by fives. We can count back on a number line. We can actually use the multiplication facts for 10 to help us, or we could use a mul multiplication table. We're going to be talking about dividing by three in our next lesson. That means we're going to put things into three equal groups or have groups that each have three in them. I'll see you there. Bye.